All right there. Hey, data lovers, and welcome to another episode of I Love Data Fridays here at the International Data Evaluation Center on the campuses of the Ohio State University. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for another episode, episode 42 of I Love Data Fridays. And folks, we've got another edition of How Do You Do Data? And as our title says, we will be joined by two teacher leaders today. So let's get right into it. Who's talking data to you today? Well, of course, you've got me, Jeff Breimer Bashore, director and co-principal investigator here at the International Data Evaluation Center. And I will be joined by Beth Moxie, teacher leader from Fayette County Public Schools, and Amy Emmons, teacher leader at Fayette County Public Schools. And today, they will be sharing several things with us. Uh, first, they will be talking about a student weekly monitoring sheet that they've created in uh, Google Sheets. And they're going to give us a little history of how and why uh, the sheets came about. Um, and then they're actually going to show us how it works. And they're going to show us two versions, um, sort of what, what, they, what they're calling the old version and then um, this year, they have a, a new version with some new features added to it. And then uh, they're going to show us how you actually prepare these sheets and then you would, how you would deploy them to, for your teachers to use. Because it's one thing to see how it works, but if you've got 30 schools and 50 teachers, um, how do you set this all up for your, uh, your teachers to be able to use successfully? Um, then they're going to talk about uh, another uh, sheet that they have, their student selection sheets. Um, that they have adapted for their use, also using Google Sheets. And then finally, at the end of the episode, um, and I'll have some information after um, the interview is done, how you can contact Beth and Amy to get access to blank copies of these sheets so you can start using them with your teachers. And just one note, uh, while we were recording, the Internet was uh, misbehaving a little bit, so you're going to, at times here... Beth and Amy might drop for just a heartbeat or so, um, but then they come right back in there, and you might see a few messages appear on the screen that says that uh, your interconnection, internet connection is slow. Um, yep, we got it. We know it was slow. So just uh, you'll hear it in there, but don't worry about it. Everything's going to be just fine. So, all right, let's get to it, and let's talk a little data. I love data for writing! Amy and uh, Beth, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself, where, uh, tell us where you work and how many years you've been in education and reading recovery. Okay, um, so my name is uh, Beth Moxie, and I am a reading recovery teacher leader uh, in Bay County, which is in central Kentucky, Lexington to be exact. Uh, I have been a teacher for 21 years, which is kind of crazy and hard to believe. I trained as a reading recovery teacher with Amy, actually, in 2006 and 2007. And then I trained as a teacher leader through the University of Kentucky in 2013-14. And I'm Amy Emmons, and like Beth, also a teacher leader here in Fayette County. Um, I have been in education for 20 years and was so blessed to have trained with Beth in 2006 in 2007 as a reading recovery teacher. And then I had the opportunity to train as a teacher leader for UK in 2017, 2018. So, all right, next question, uh, non-serious question. You know, what are we all watching on our Netflix and our Hulus and whatever, what we're watching? Yeah, so my daughter and I just finished Friends on, I think Netflix. Uh, because it was, it's ending, you know, it's not, Friends is going off of Netflix and moving on to a different uh, yeah. online service. So we wanted to get through that. So we just finished it. I still cried at the last episode, like <laughs> I did <laughs> however many years ago when that, that one came on. And then now she and I are watching um, all the seasons of Glee. So we're having a really good time. But then for myself, I watched some things are, you know, that I wouldn't necessarily want to watch with her, which, which is uh, Nurse Jackie. Oh, sorry. yes. Yes. I love that show. It's just funny and just, you know, I can just kind of veg out when I watch it. And then I just also finished Jack Ryan on Amazon. So that was really good. I actually had to pay more attention because there were a lot of um, subtitles. So I actually had to read it. So okay. I could 
out like Nurse Jackie? I, we have the Hulu. So I have been watching with my husband, the Goldbergs, um, only because it was recommended to me by a friend who said, you really remind me of Beverly. And (laughs) she was right. Beverly is over the top in a lot of ways. And I do identify with her on so many levels. And then um, there is a show called Schools, Schooled, which is a spinoff of the Goldbergs. Uh And it's the 90s, which is when I was in high school. So I feel kind of obligated to watch it. It's pretty funny. And I've also come across a comedian on YouTube named Leanne Morgan, who's quite hilarious. She's a mom and it's basically her story through jokes and I can really relate. So she's, she's good. All right. I've, um, I've been my, so last year, the family got me watching the YouTube series, Good Mythical Morning with, um, Rhett and Link. So I've been watching a lot of Good Mythical Morning, um, the other thing that my son and I, we, it's not a, it's a podcast, but wherever, wherever, for some reason in my family, my son and I are always the ones that are like together. The girls are always at synchronized swimming, so we never <laughs> see them. Um, so we always listen to um, Stuff You Should Know, the Stuff You Should Know podcast. Oh, yeah. All right. So I suppose we should get to the, to the meat of our discussion today. Um, so, uh, Beth, I'm going to take a second and maybe do a brief description. You tell me where I got it right or wrong or where you want to add in some, and and Amy too, where you, uh, what will be seen today. Um, so we're going to be looking first at, um, uh, an example of like a, a a weekly student, uh, monitoring, uh, report that you've put together or you guys have put together or developed over time on Google sheets. Um, and we're going to be looking at how that works um, and then in a practical sense, like how you actually sort of deploy that for your teachers in your various uh, schools. And then just at the, you also then just showed me before we started recording, um, uh, what was that, a student, your student selection sheet? Yes, the, the form we use to help teachers with their selection of their students. Okay, so um, so why don't you guys give me a brief history of how all of this um, came into being? Okay, so I'm going to start with that. And, you know, Beth and I were talking, and from the time we started in Read and Recovery, just the process we had at our site was that we turned in our monthly monitoring forms at our monthly professional learning meetings. And we as teacher leaders didn't feel like we were connected to the progress of the reading recovery and literacy lessons students in our site. And we didn't know that we were necessarily supporting our, our teachers um, to the level that they deserved and needed to be supported. So in order to kind of correct that lapse in time, the online forms were created. And so they, they really provide us a better real time um, way to gather information and data, and it really allows us to collaborate with and support our teachers more in in the moment um, rather than waiting a month or waiting for one of them to call us and say there's a problem. We can help them identify that early on, and so it's generally really helped us connect with our teachers and their students and be more involved. Okay, good. Um. Do you guys want to speak briefly? I know since as we kind of added this news, speak briefly about um, why the you know why we have the this electronic version of the student selection form. Yeah, so we made the um, the selection form because the way we had done it in the past is that teachers would fill out their selection sheet. Um, and it would, they would either have to fax it to us or email it to us and scan it and that kind of stuff. Um, but what we did is we actually created it in Google Sheets. And so it's loaded into the drives, which we'll share with you guys in just a few minutes. Um, and it just uh, kind of eliminated the need for all the paper shuffling. And so we go in, they send us their data, we look at it, we approve it. And then we add our comments in there too. So we have evidence of, yes, we've looked at it. Yes, we've discussed it. And so then that stays in their um, school drive or their school folder forever. And so there's no need to necessarily keep hard copies of things anymore. Okay. It's, it, 
It's because we have that documentation in a drive for, you know, a long time. Yeah. It just got overwhelming with, you know, when we have 50 some odd teachers and, you know, almost 30 schools, it was just a lot of paper and just shuffling. And did I look at that? Did I not look at that? So it just helped to kind of keep us more organized. Gotcha. Yeah. Not constantly running to the fax machine. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yeah. Um, Yes. Okay. Now, I so as we've talked about this before, um, especially with the school, your your weekly monitoring form, um, you know, you guys didn't like develop this over one weekend and one glass of wine. This was like a multi-year sort of effort that, you know, you started out with something that was basic and then moved, you know, every year or whatever, you, you added new stuff to it, right? Yes, absolutely. Like the first time that we did it, it was just basically the... Um, the, the paper version of the monthly monitoring form, we just put it in a Google sheet. And then over time, and even just not even like, we didn't wait a year, like we would be tinkering with it, you know, and replacing the old one, old versions with the new ones in the teacher's files and to what it is today, which has like conditional formatting, which helps us to quickly, and also the teachers to quickly see like different trends, like in terms of accuracy rate and self-correction ratio. Um, And then we even added um, this year a lot of the forms that um, teachers are having to fill out. We added that into the tabs at the bottom of the Google Sheet um, so that they can keep everything in one place, basically. Okay. Uh, Well, all right. So now I'm I'm sort of getting into talking about it without letting you guys show it. Why don't you guys... um, uh, I'm sure everyone's really interested in seeing all of the... what, What you've done. So why don't you give us a... An overview of what you have, how it behaves and everything. Sure. So um, what what you guys are looking at right now is what's called the My Drive in Google. So this is just like your personal storage space. And so where I'm going right now is just in the folder that I created for today's I Love Data um, episode. And so this is what the old form um, looked like. And actually, this is not the original form. I don't, I don't even think I have the old, old form because... Um, it just, it, it's basically this, but without all the color coding. So what we wanted to have um, is that for teachers to have a twofold, one for them to have a one-stop shop for all the things that they would need to enter in at the end of the year for IDEC. So there's not a lot of like paper shuffling. And so you'll see at the top up here, like all of these things, all these questions that are asked on the IDEC survey. Um, so they fill that out. And then, um, Right here, if you have an English language learner, um, if they speak another language than English at home, we added a drop down box in our district. Um, We don't, we use the IDEC rubric of oral oral language to identify like the child's control over English. And there's a drop down box that matches all the the different statements on the rubric. And so then you can just kind of pick that. Um, So that's what goes at the top. And then there's just some other basic information like the first date of roaming, the first regular lesson, the final date of lessons, all those things that get recorded in IDAC. And at the bottom is where you'll see like where they put the observation survey information. So that's all kind of like basic beginning of program things. Then here, what we have is what mainly after they get all the things entered in that are just the basic things, we look at what's down here. And I've already entered in some sample data just to kind of move things along so you could see. So okay. they get the day, the week, and then they number the lessons. And then over here, if a, you know the child is absent or the child's unavailable or the teacher's absent or the teacher's unavailable, or if there's no school, um, we've set conditional formatting to where it will color code that. And so what that helps us look at is that if there's a lot of, for example, child unavailables, you know, if we see a lot of purple colors on this on the attendance form, um, that lets us know that maybe we need to work with the teacher and finding an alternate time to get that child. Or if we see a lot of TUs, you know, the teacher unavailables, then that makes us, you know, think about, well, is there something, you know, is this teacher getting pulled to be a substitute a lot? Or, you know, what other things are going on that are getting in the way of daily lessons? Yeah. So, Beth, can I ask you a question real quick? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so in general on this form, so so there's uh, one form for, for each child, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then for uh, on this form, each row 
is one week's worth of 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 data. Correct. Okay. And with and Correct. each week you're collecting their um uh on your collect on each day of the week you're collecting their text text level. No. So on each day, this is just so like where it says week one and then it says underneath Monday one, two, then T A teacher absent. That is just the number, the lesson number. Ah, the lesson number. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then over here where it says level, um, we just collect like the, well, we usually they use Friday's um, text level for uh -huh. that child. And so they put like the week's uh, text level. And then um, once the child is out of roaming, then they also record the percent accuracy and the self-correction ratio for whatever the last running record was of that week. And then the same, this is the writing vocabulary total. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like for this week, you can just see, like, if um, this would be lesson, let's say Monday was lesson 12, and then let's say on Tuesday there was a snow day. And then for snow day, you're either going to put, like, if there's no school or a holiday, you would put in, oops, I'm in the wrong one. Like in S, and then that turns it black. And then let's say 13, and then um, let's say the child was absent, and then let's say the teacher was absent. You can see how it changes the colors. Yes, yeah. We did too is we set it to a formula to where it will calculate program totals. And so gone are the days of having to figure out and go back and count how many TAs, how many TUs. And so it automatically populates all that information for you based on what you've put up here. Nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so you can see, you just put that in, and then let's say at text level four on Friday, the child was 89%, and you see how that color codes it red, because if it's 89% um, or below, then that's considered the hard mm -hmm. level child. And then let's say the self-correction ratio is one to seven, and so that color codes it red as well, because anything above like one to one, one to two, one to three, like those are acceptable, but like one to four, you know, and above you start to get into it an issue with maybe the child has a monitoring problem. Okay. Oh, so um, you can see we have those color codes there. Yeah. So, so this is, this is very nice. So, um, I mean, initially you said you just kind of, you, you sort of started with the, the basic information that's mostly on the left-hand side, the weekly and daily information. That's what you, that was sort of like where you've started with this when you did like the first well, versions. And Mm -hmm. uh, and it had the other things on there too, oh, like okay. all the date and that kind of stuff. But really what was, what's new is the color, the conditional formatting with the color coding. Okay. No, this is awesome. That was really wow. the new piece. And actually Amy Smith was the one who played around with it and figured out how to do that, how to do the, the conditional formatting. And also she figured out how to make it calculate um, the totals over here. So um Anyway. Yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to, I want to ask another question here and I, and I'm, I apologize if, I, if like, if I'm skipping ahead on you or, or something. Mm -hmm. um, so like at the, so like when you guys then get your teachers together for a data entry day, um, they mm -hmm. would, ha they would have these forms and then also the IDEC website open at the same time. So they are just pulling one from the other and not having yep. to shuffle stuff around. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Which yeah. And so, you know, like Amy said, like in our back before we created this online space for the data monitoring, teachers were bringing a hard copy of this form that we're showing you today without the colors, obviously. And they would turn those in every single month and then we would look at it and then we would, you know, take a look, look for, for problems or, you know, oh, this child might be ready to discontinue. And so then we would have to send an email and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so it just became, again, a lot of paper shuffling and that kind of stuff. So what we actually do now is we check these forms once a week, roughly. Um, sometimes it goes every two weeks, depending on, you know, what's going on. But what we can do is we can go in and we can actually add comments uh -huh. to the form. And then our teachers can read those comments and respond. So like if we had a question, for example, what you do is we just click on the cell. And then you there's a couple of ways. I typically just do a right click with my mouse. Yeah. And then scroll down and hit comment. And then you can just type in a comment. And the way that um, this is a newer way that we've learned how to make comments so that the teacher definitely gets a notification is that you hit the plus sign and then you type in the teacher's name. Ooh, yeah. 
pops up and then you say, um, you know, whatever your comment is, um, like potential, potential text level issue or, you know, yeah, I'm just yeah. talking about really just to give an example. And then you hit assign and then that person gets an email. Um, And then they get an email and then they can click on it and reply back to it. And then you can reply back, hey, would you like a visit you know, or whatever it is. And we ask our teachers not to um, click that, that button right there, which is the mark is done and hide discussion, because that way we always have record of the conversations we're having with teachers. Right. So okay. the is really, really nice. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's real nice. Mm -hmm. So so the, the, the other big advantage that you guys have found from this then and correct me if I'm wrong is that um, you've gone from a delayed response to almost like a at times a a real-time response of needs or of um, as they come up in the data absolutely yes and teachers um, will make comments to us too like if they have questions or like concerns about their kids like if there's something that, you know, hey, I really would like for you to come out and see this kid or, you know, that kind of stuff, um, they will make comments back and forth. So it's not always coming from our side. Sometimes it comes from them as well. Okay. So that's the old form. Um, and really, do you care if I go ahead and is there any other questions you have about this? No, I'm I, good. I, I was, you know what I was saying in my mind? I was like, um, I forgot this was the old form. And I was like, really? That's mm -hmm. the old form, man. This thing's like already <laughs> like, you know, like microwaving and, and mixing <laughs> drinks for me. So what is the, yeah, bring yeah, on the really, new form. Yeah. So really the old form and the new form, there's really no difference in terms of the way that this main sheet behaves. So it does all the things that we just showed, you know, the, the conditional formatting and that kind of stuff. But what's new is that we added these tabs. Oh, along. Oh, oh. you see that? Yeah. And so um, there's all kinds of things on there. Um, so we took some of the uh, forms that were um, on the Read and Recovery website or some of the forms that are, you know, required for our teachers to fill out and put them here. We only require... Um, a few of the forms, they're all there for the teachers to fill out if they want, uh, because what we found is that a lot of schools are moving to more of a um, cloud based yes. and keeping a lot of things in Google anyway. And so a lot of our teachers are very comfortable with interacting with things through the Internet and through Google. And so we went ahead and put everything on there for them to use if they want. But of course, they can also keep things paper copy if they want as well. Okay. So on the bottom, so the ones that are blue are the ones that we are requiring this year. Okay. Uh, so we require obviously the data form and we tell them you can either update it every day or you can update it like once a week. Like we typically, ch I typically check mine either on Sunday night or Monday. Um, and I typically check mine on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So, and so they kind of know that. And so we asked them to have that updated so we can take a look at it. Um, something new that we added is that there used to be in the, um, one of the required forms for renal recovery is the text level graph, mm -hmm. the changeover level. And so what we did is we actually created a way that it would automatically generate it based on the data that they put in this level column. So like, for example, let's say a child comes in at week one, it's a text level one, then there are two, and let's say that okay. when you click on this tab, you can see it automatically graphs that for you. Yeah, nice. The one thing that I, I'm, I've tried to figure out, and maybe somebody out there will be able to help me, um, but I can't figure it out, is I would like for it to have a way to add the aim line, um, just so you can kind of see, like set a goal, like, okay, in at the end of 12 weeks or end of 13 weeks, I want my child to be at a text level 12, for example. And so that we would add that little line so you can kind of compare it to how your progress is going. But I don't know how to do that, so... Um, I've Googled and tried to figure it out, and I don't know. So okay, <laughs> that's what I would like to see happen for the, the automatically generating uh, text level graph. Um, the other thing that we require is the observation survey summary sheet. And so 
there was uh, on our RCNA's website a form that would, um, it was through PDF and they could type into it because a lot of our teachers like to type this instead of handwriting it. Yeah. But we found that the form, it just, it, some pieces of it didn't necessarily um, operate in the way that the formatting was difficult to um, use at times. Mm-hmm. And so what we did is we moved it to this and, you know, teachers just go in and they type it. It's the exact same information that's on the other form, but then they can go in there and type it. Um, so they can interact that after they give their observation survey. Um, they can do that. Um, the other thing that we are requiring is, um, and I think that Amy and um, who's and doing it with her? Leslie. Leslie, Leslie, McBain. Leslie, Amy, Leslie McBain are going to be talking about this on another I Love Data Friday session with you. Yeah. So I don't want to go too much detail, but this was something that um, a, out of the the new literacy lessons book coming out mm-hmm. and about how talking about discontinuing as a process. And so this was something that Amy Smith created. Um, and so we required that of our teachers uh, to keep track of what they're doing about four to six weeks before the child discontinues. So we required that moving away from kind of thinking about discontinuing as we keep things moving along. And then all of a sudden we're testing out and there's no like transition back to the classroom. So we required those forms. So those are the main ones that we require. The others are optional. So we've got like the daily running record form that way, instead of just, you know, because on the monitoring form, the main form, we're only seeing Friday or like the last. um, Yeah, the last recorded level. mm -hmm. Yes. And sometimes, you know, that doesn't always show the full picture. And so the daily lets us see that incremental change, kind of like you when you asked at the beginning, like, is this what there is this the daily, daily things? But really that's just attendance. But this shows us daily how children are performing on their running records. They are required to keep this either paper copy or online. Okay. Uh, what I'm actually doing uh, is that this is what I was going to say when I lost my train of thought earlier is that I downloaded the drive app on my phone. And so what I'm actually doing is I'm updating the data form and the daily running record form on my phone right when I sit down to plan my lessons with my student. Oh, and okay. So you don't have to like set aside time. You can do it all through your phone or through your iPad, or obviously you can do it on your, your laptop too. But I'm, it's really fast to just do it on your phone. And so that's how I, how I do it. Yeah, it's, it's very convenient. Mm-hmm. And we've shared that with our teachers as well. So a lot of them have started moving to just doing it right there in your. Um, here is the uh, weekly writing vocabulary chart. I'll be honest with you. I put this in here, but I don't really use this one. I tend to prefer to keep mine paper copy because that way I can have it out there in front of me uh, when I'm teaching my lessons. But it's an option if somebody wants to use it. Uh huh. And then. Um, this classroom collaboration log is just something we kind of, it's not a required form by anybody. We just thought, you know, our teachers are doing a lot of work with teachers. And so we wanted to give them an option of having a way to keep track of the things that they're doing with their um, the classroom teachers they're mm-hmm. collaborating with. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if the teacher were to come and watch a lesson or the, the reading recovery teacher were to go and watch a reading recovery lesson, just some different things. And it's got like the action plan or the next step. So that's just something quick that we popped in there. And then these forms down here are their predictions of progress. They gave four different or four versions of it. Um, Most teachers keep this as a paper copy um, and not, they're not using that. And then the other thing is the discontinue summary. And it's required for them to fill out, but it's not required for them to do it in the Google. So we wanted to just kind of create a space where all the child's information pertaining to like reading recovery, we're in one location. You know, all I have to say is, damn, I mean, that is, (laughs) that is impressive. (laughs) No, I'm serious. I mean, like I'm sitting over here just like, wow. So it just, we just wanted to have a, like we said, like a one space for the teachers to have everything. And so what they do is they go in and they make a copy of the form and then they rename it with their children's names. And then um, they fill that out. And it's just really, we're trying to eliminate 
double work. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Line things to... Right. So yeah, so just streamlining. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that with the accuracy right, um, this is just a formatting thing, not to enter the percent sign, because oh. if you enter the percent sign, it'll mess with the conditional formatting. Right. So just as a general thing, if somebody asks for this form, be sure to tell your people no percent sign. <laughs> just enter the number. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. You even have little... Uh, little right. uh, Little, no. So yeah, so the little, um, <laughs> right, because I'm a little bit crazy like that. So like the boxes with a black little mark in the corner, that's a note that I added. Um, so like there, you can see. Um, oh, if you, if, uh, tr trust me, I understand because like on our question on the website about like race, ethnicity. Yes, um, I saw that. Like people are just like, that's the most passive aggressive help topic <laughs> you've ever published on and I'm, I'm like, listen, I'm just tired of people writing in things anyway. that are not accurate. Yeah, yes. And so. so you can see here we put IC, which is Infinite Campus, which is the um, the system we use in Fayette County and actually probably the whole state of Kentucky. Yes. And so there's a thing on there that that specifically lists the race. And so we wanted to make sure that people yes. use what Infinite Campus has identified as the child's race because. Don't assume. That's what right. all our teachers yeah. make. Catches. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so that's basically the new form. It's the same as the old form, except it has all the different tabs along the bottom. Um, I totally want to solve that text level graph problem for you. Listen, I might be emailing you, you later. That, I will be forever grateful. Like I've tried and tried and tried and it just, I amazing. just cannot get it to create it. And I wanted to be able to create a, Several years ago, we heard, I think it was Mary McBride, to talk about how um, she has her teachers um, use, create that paper version, and she has them draw the line. So, like, she has them draw, um, like, one color line from, you know, where the child comes into program, and then what you want them in, like, 12 weeks, and that's one color. And then that's, like, accelerated progress. And then another line is, like, average progress. So then that might be, like, 15 or 16 or 17 weeks. And that would be a different color. And then you would have another line that would be like red or yellow right. or something like that. And that would be like slow rate of progress. And so what that does, it lets you kind of compare how you're doing. Yeah. So I would love a way to have those three different color aim lines on there just because I think it's really helpful. I mean, I thought it was really helpful as a teacher to be able to see how quickly I'm moving the Absolutely. child in comparison to my goals. Right, right. Um, yeah. Be a big thing if you could do that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to think about this. Okay. Yeah. Woo, man. I'm like, I'm like tired already. That was woo. I mean, that was, <laughs> and I still know, I know we got more. Um, so, all right. So, uh, so I, let me ask that you, this, that's kind of the, that's the overview right there. That's, we got most of what you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. that's just the, the form walkthrough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know there's probably a hundred more details, but um, all right. So then, let me move on to our our question here of like, you know, so obviously you guys work with a lot of schools and and teachers. So how do you, you know, the next question is, you know, how do you organize and set this all up for your teachers to be ready to go at the start of the school year? Okay. So um, we actually have two different drives. So we have the first drive is what's called a shared drive. And that is a drive where all the things that we want to share with our teachers, um, like articles or things that we've done in, you know, our ongoing professional learning, anything that they think they might need, like record of oral language, like anything and everything that they might need. And everybody in our site can see everything here. Okay. Okay. So that is, one drive and that's a shared drive. The other drive where we keep the forms that we just showed you is actually we store those in the my drive. And if you're at a with multiple teacher leaders and you all want to have the ability to like share everything with each other, you, one person will have to create the folder in my drive and then share it with the other person. And so what I did is I created this first folder is all of our schools. Okay. So 
this, I actually just created a little fake folders to kind of walk through the process. And so this is where you will store like all your school level data monitoring forms. Okay. In order to give um, like it, you have to have access. Like I, we have to grant you access. So not everybody in the site can see it. Only the people that we allow or add to that, that certain folder will be able to access it. So school A can't see what's going on with school B. Okay. Correct. Right. So um, you'll have to create a folder in your um, My Drive section of Google. And then once you've kind of created a folder and you've named it whatever you want, I tend to add a number in front of the ones that I know are really important so that they always pop up first. And so like number, the first thing I'm usually looking at with my teachers is my Marine Recovery Literacy Lesson School data. So for this one, whenever you first start, you'll need to have a place where you keep your your master copies of your forms. And so you can see number two is the new blank data form. So that's the one with all the tabs at the bottom. And then the other form, which we'll show at the end, is that blank selection sheet. So a personal area. So nobody else can see that except for myself. And then like Amy Emmons will have access to the, everything in this folder. Okay? okay. So then what you'll need to do is you have to create folders for each school. And the way that you do that is you have a couple of options that you can either go new and then do folder. Uh -huh. The way I do it is I use my mouse a lot. And so you just right click and then you say new folder. And so that'll pop it up. And I'm just going to call this. Um, sorry about that. No problem. Back elementary. Okay. So then what will happen is that that'll pop up. And then what I usually do my next step would be to go ahead into that and add like individual folders for teachers. So if it's a school with just like a single teacher, I don't make another folder. But if it's a school that has multiple teachers, I create a folder for each teacher. And okay. so let's this school has Amy Emmons. And there's Amy's folder. And I'm just right clicking. Mm -hmm. Then it has a teacher named Roxy. Okay, so okay. now it has a folder. And then what I do is I go in and I make a copy of my masters. So I'm going to put the copy of the um, blank data form, and I just right click and hit make a copy. And then I make a copy of the blank selection sheet and I go to make a copy. And then I drag that into each with your mouse and drag it and then drag it. And then when you go back to the folder, you see the copies. And so then what the teachers have to do is then they make a copy of it. And then they drag it into their personal folders. Ah, okay. Okay. And then from there, so that way they always have a master copy in their personal a folders. Clean one. Yeah, yes. a clean version. And so like Amy will go in and then she will rename hers as let's say her student's name is Amy Smith. So she'll rename it as Amy Smith and then she'll go into that and she'll put all of Amy Smith's information in. Okay. And the reason why these numbers are popping up is I forgot to go in and delete that. So whenever you um, go in and create your personal master copies or, you know, originals or whatever, you'll need to go in and delete the, the little fake data. that. I right, have. right. We, and it's there because we, yeah. you, we used a blank, the blank, master as an example for today so once i go in and delete it from the from the one you know i can it'll it'll fix it yeah yeah and um now that i've kind of put i've created the school i've put whatever teachers are in there then what i have to do is i have to go and share this person this folder with the people at the school and the way that we do it our at our site is that anybody at that school can access that whole folder. So like if I wanted to, I could look at Amy's information and then she could look at mine. So um, 
So we set permission so that everybody can see everything. Right. That- because you guys are call or the people at schools are colleagues and they typically can see yes. data at their school anyways. Right. Yeah, exactly. So we gave permissions for all that. And the way that you share that is that you get back to your main screen where you have the folder and you right click on it and you click share. And then you just type in the people that you want to share it with. I don't, I'm not going to share it with myself because you know, right, it. right. So, hold on, you can add a note. Um, here is your RR school folder. And then you send it, make sure notify and make sure that this says has like the little pencil on it. And that means that they can go in and edit everything. If you change it to can view only, they won't be able to do anything in it. Gotcha. As a pencil. And then you hit send and then they get an email and now they can see just that folder. And, I, and I've noticed that the little icon changes and it puts that little person on the front of the mm-hmm. folder to indicate that it's shared. Yep. Exactly. And if you always, or if you're wondering about who has access to the folder, you can go into the folder and actually click on the people button. Actually, I clicked too fast. You just click on it or hover over it and those people pop up. Um, whoever creates it, which in this case, it was me. Um, I'll always be the owner, but everybody else can do anything in that folder that they want. Okay. And then what we do at the end of the year, um, after IDEC has been entered and in the summer, um, we have them move all of their information from this current year into a folder. And so we might call this like 2019-20. Then anything relating to 2019-20 gets stored over there. Oh, I like that. Okay, so yeah. so every year you're not creating your elementary school folders. Um, you have them, you just have essentially the master folder structure, and then you're just, so everyone, like you said, once a year closes out, you just create a new little subfolder and move everything in there. And yes. Yeah. Yep. All and right. So then next year, whenever they come in, and we usually do all the setup for them, um, just so that it's done in a way that, it's easy for us to find later on and that everybody's consistent. And so the next year when they come in, there will be like two new folders with any Emmons. And then you have to create the next folder, you know, go in and do that. You don't have to reshare anything um, with them because everybody already still has access. So, but if you have new teachers and that kind of stuff come in, you'll have to go in and actually add them. Or if you have people retire, you can go in and take the people off who used to have access. Okay. No, that's, I mean, that's great. So, so really the first year that you set this up is the longest, will take the longest to set it all because you have to set all of the structure up, but then subsequent years are a little easier. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. So like last year, um, you know, where we kind of, where we messed around with the forms, we made a lot of like updates and that kind of stuff. Um, and added the files along the bottom or the, you know, the tabs along the bottom, I did have to go in and um, put, take out the old version of the monitoring form and replace it with the new one. That one took a little bit of time this year, just because we messed around with the forms a little bit, but I don't anticipate the forms changing unless somebody can figure out how to add that aim line. Um, So the the form should stay the same. So all that kind of initial stuff should be should be done. But you're right. The first year is the hardest not, not hard, but it's the most time consuming. Right, right. Um it is if you mess with if you do anything with the forms and change them, you have to go in. They won't automatically update. Um like if I make a change on the master, it won't automatically update the master for everybody. Like I have to go in and physically make a copy of the new one and drag it in there. Right. So Okay. Excellent. Yep. All, all right. Well, that's basically it. Um, do you want me to show, because uh, we've kind of played around with some different things, but this is what we found to be the best way way that we keep track of, um, like, how people are doing, like, things like that, like the, the checking structure, like the checking process that we use. Yeah, go for it. Let's, I think. So... Well, what we do, let me get back here to the, to the main thing, is that in our um, main read and recovery literacy lessons folder, there's a sample checkoff sheet. And um, what we do, 
We keep it in Google Sheets. Um, and so these are all of our teachers' names. We've got their school. We added a column that says visit because you know, every teacher has to get at least one visit. And so it just helps us keep track of who we've seen mm -hmm. and who we haven't. And then the when up here, obviously, the dates that we uh -huh. keep track of. And then if the teacher has it updated, you know, we mark it with an X. If it's not updated, then, you know, that we get a comment just so we can see if, you know, there's certain people who aren't necessarily keeping up with their forms. Um, so we have that. And then what we also do well, uh, is let's say on 1028, I make a comment on um, Amy Emmons's data, a question about a particular student. You can go in here and add a comment. And then you, I usually just write like the kid's name. Um, but um, monitoring, that helps me also keep track of who I've asked questions about and that kind of stuff. Okay. So, and you can see when I have a comment, it has a little, has a little orange, um, changes that little color to orange. So that way I can see from week to week very quickly. And so this is just how we keep track of just different, with our teachers, sorry. No, this is so good. We have like, I have this up and then I have the Google sheet open and I'm just kind of manipulating back and forth um, with our teachers. That's how we keep track of what we've seen, comments that we've made and that kind of stuff. Good, excellent. Um, all right, so now we kind of added on for today also an, an extra form that you... Um, uh, that you guys were going to uh, talk about, the selection sheet. Mm -hmm. And so the selection sheet looks the same as like the paper copy. Uh -huh. You know, and all that are the same. Only thing that's different is down here at the bottom. Let me make this a little bit smaller. You know, they'll go in, they will put their names, they'll fill out text level, all that information. So what it does is that we set it to where, you know, because they have to count the number of low stay nines for their kids. And so we've set it to where stay nines one, two, and three change to red. Like four is yellow, five, oh, wrong one. And five and above don't change to anything. So it just helps them very quickly see how many low stay nines. Okay. And they can calculate that. This other is just, um, that's our district's personal requirement. So, mm -hmm. yeah, two different it's, assessments there. The map maps uh, percentile, and then if they get uh, what's called the fast, the fast assessment. We don't. That's not part of our um, selection requirement. Let me just make that very clear. But um, it, it's 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 nice information to have. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And then over here in the comments, what we do is once the child. We go in and we just add a comment again, and then we just type in like the same way that I showed you before. Like you hit the plus, and then the teacher's name, and then we put approved with the date that we looked at it and approved it. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that way we have all that information. And what we did differently this year than what we did last year is that last year there was a blank selection sheet for like every selection of students, and so what we did is. To make it streamlined again so there's not multiple selection sheets and files kind of floating around is that we actually added the selection sheet tabs along the bottom and so like for the first selection of kids it all goes on so like in the fall it all goes here in the second selection it all goes here and in the third selection if there is one um it goes there oh okay nice okay yeah so we just made it just one file but added the tabs along the bottom so it just again it just helps with of papers and you know did I approve that did I not approve that you know that kind of stuff. so this and the data monitoring form all are already placed in the um, school folders for the teachers to make copies of and to put their information in nice man so I, I gotta tell you guys I, I I I've got I'm gonna clap for you guys over here personally I mean this was this was no this is great you know what i love about this is that um I, you, you've totally used like 
off the shelf stuff and you've just adapted it to to meet your needs and um and this is wonderful thanks yeah well say to like for anybody if, you know for people who are interested in it you know we are we are 100 willing to share but if you make it better or you know figure out something that's neat or something maybe we haven't um figured out just to please email us and share it back with us because we're always looking to make it better and easier um, and just more useful for our teachers. So. Woo, man, I don't even know if I have any more. I mean, this was great guys. Um, uh, um, so how, do, okay. So I'll set this up. How do we get in contact with you guys about this? Yes. Okay. So um, what we did is we made a um, QR code. Let me make it a little bit smaller. So in order for people to get in touch with us, um, if they want copies of the forms and the selection sheet, if they open up their camera on their phone and aim it at the QR code, you don't actually have to take a picture of it. You just kind of, it's like you're getting ready to take a picture then it should pop up a little message that says open form in, you know, whatever your browser is on your phone. And it will link you to um, a Google survey. It's called Google form and just put that information in there. And we've set it to where it will send us an email that somebody has filled it out and we will use that information to share the forms with you. Amy, Beth, this was great. I am, uh, this was a. I'm so glad you were able to share this, uh, all of this stuff today. I think this is, um, like I said, a wonderful example of just, you know, a lot of hard work using, um, you know, nothing, you know, nothing fancy to create something fancy. I love it, and um, <laughs> and uh, and I'm so glad that uh, man, you, I, I'm, I'm, I have, I'm, at, I'm literally at a loss for words right now. This is why I'm stumbling. <laughs> Uh, and I think this is this is wonderful. So so I'll simply say thank you so much for taking the time to share this and everything. And I think people are going to find this immensely helpful. Well, good. We hope so. I mean, we really um, it's helped us and it's helped us to be more in touch with our teachers and to kind of help them along the way. And then we've just been playing around with the technology and just learning new things. So yes. we hope people find it useful. Absolutely. Oh. All right. There you have it, our interview with Beth Moxie and Amy Emmons from Fayette County Public Schools. As they said in their video, um, they would be happy to share this work with you. And um, they showed this earlier in the video, but I'm going to show it up here on my screen again. If you want to contact uh, Beth and Amy and to get a copy of these files, um, you can either, one, email them, and their email addresses are right on there. Or if you take your phone and you just quickly scan this QR code, this will, like they said in the video, will take you to a Google Forms, and um, and they'll then send you some links to the to those sheets that you can start using. All right, so I'm going to cue some outro music here. Let's get it up. Go to the next screen. There we go. Outro music, go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another episode of I Love Data Fridays. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, channel yet please feel free to smash that subscribe button right there on youtube and hey guess what we will talk data to you later